Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Suzerian. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So, we have some trade talks with the President of Wayland. So we're on this one flight to Hosor to uh, Restlitz. Took approximately five hours. Despite heavy turbulence, I managed to sleep a little. Along with Simon and David, we landed in the International Airport in the capital city of Wayland. Our aim here was to finalize a trade deal drafted between Sorland and Wayland. Shortly after our plane landed, the door opened and the sun blinded me for a moment, and I stepped outside. I saw the soldiers lined up on either side of the red carpet. There must have been at least 100 soldiers marking band together. The marching band started playing, and the soldiers immediately saluted me. Salute the soldiers. At the bottom of the stairs, Victor Smolak was waiting for me next to the military jeep with a few soldiers by his side. There were a few reporters on his side waiting uh, with their cameras. He was a tall man, almost as tall as me. He was wearing large sunglasses and an attire was a regular suit, contrasting with the military attire of everybody else in the field. Mr. President, welcome to Rasklowitz. He merely motioned for an embrace. We hugged and many cameras went off at the same time. He turned around for a couple of additional poses. It's nice to see you, Mr. President. Now that's the pleasantries are done. Let's go. We will take the Jeep for a tour. With another tune from the marching band, we boarded the military Jeep. He sat in the driver's seat and I sat next to him. As he started speeding up, the soldiers saluted again. Victor Smolak saluted back. I salute the soldiers. My security detail and Victor's uh, security details started following us immediately, along with his team of reporters. We will first go to the city center to see the opening of the statue. I mean, whose statue? It's mine, of course. We kept making small talk about the flight and weather until we reached, uh, until we reached started. And the weather... We kept making small talk and, and about the flight and the weather until we reached, started making our way to the... Okay, this this is not right. Anyways, almost every corner there were reporters taking photos of us. Oddly enough, every single street that uh, we took seemed completely empty. As last was always is empty. I had the locals close down their business because of your visit so that we can enjoy the city more. There we are. We arrived at the city center in the middle of a large plaza. There was a covered statue. Lots of people had gathered behind the fences, and they were waving both Sorland and VLN flags. Victor waved back at them. Many people have always been supported, have been very supportive with this visit, Mr. President. I'm sure you're delighted to see. A man came closer to the fences and started yelling at Victor. With my limited knowledge of the Western language, I understood the words Victor and murderer. Almost simultaneously, two soldiers showed up from behind the man, and he was taken away. Thankfully, the sun is up. They will be a good day for the reveal. What happened to the man that was protesting you? Oh, which man? That one in the crowd? Don't worry about the details. He must have been a trouble fellow. Let's follow the event. We took our place in front of the statue with a drum roll. The statue of Victor Smolak was uncovered. The statue was pretty. Was done pretty well. Except that was made. He was made more masculine. He was wearing a cloak and holding a sword in his hand. Excellent statue. Very lifelike, don't you think? Yeah, it's very good. Very lifelike. Glad you appreciate the art behind it. Join me for a walk. I followed him through the streets. At every corner, more and more photos were being taken. We stopped in front of the pastry vendor on the street. Give me two strudels. The man behind the stand smiled and gave us two strudels. I put my hand on my wallet, brought up some money to give to the vendor. Hold up. Your money doesn't count here. I got this. He handed the money to the street vendor. The camera flashed again. Afterwards, we walked a short distance to the palace. Passing the gates of the palace, we made our way into the main building. Made from the ivory columns, colored stones. The old guard tower is flanked a magnificent main building up from both sides. Inside of the palace is very spacious, with a very large chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Grand staircases made from the same ivory stone that had red carpets on them. Both on both sides of the upper levels, guards stood with traditional outfits of the old Wessex kingdoms. We finally reached the office of the President of Wayland. Uh, the door closed behind us. The interior boasted gold ornaments in the walls, ivory colors, and various jewels attached to different artifacts of old. It was a customary in Valen. We sat down on the carpet. Now we can talk about our trade deal. Before that, he his hand he clapped his hands twice. Bring the Kasha. A few citizens immediately entered the room carrying a large ornament uh ornamented uh, Kisha, a well known smoking instrument originating from Wayland. They immediately lifted up the room and it's the room was filled with the smell of tobacco. Uh, he inhaled the smoke and handed me the Kisha. I was probably the it was probably the highest quality tobacco I've ever smoked. I handed it back. He took another puff, filling the room with more smoke. So, Mr. President, bah, that's too long. Can I call you Anton? Yeah, sure, why not? Anton, tell me, what do you really think about Roomberg? I 
I don't know, a threat that needs to be dealt with. I agree with your sentiment, Anton. They are a threat to everybody in the region. Do you border them? You do. Okay, there's actually there's a border right here. I agree with your sentiment, Anton. They are a threat to everybody in the region. I assure you their time will come. Are you planning something? No, not yet. For now, I have something else in mind. I'm listening. He claps his hand again. Two assistants come into the room with a map of the border region between Vela and Sorland. He points at the border. Look. The Bloods and their so-called BFF are causing problems for me in this region. I know that there's also a problem for you as well. I will not allow these traitors to exist in my border, so I'll hit them with all the might of Valen. These terrorists need to be destroyed. I call it Operation Bear Trap. What do you want from me? He grinned and laid back the large pool behind him. Here's the deal. I give you the best trade deal in the region. You'll give me your assistance, a crush and terrorists on both our borders. I need more specifics, sure. My spies have been traded on BFF cells and they found caches of KA-74s. We traced them back to Rumberg. This alone justifies my retaliation to protect my country. Worst of all, we have also found similar shipments that are going to Sorland. Yes, Anton, you see. This is not just Wayland's problem. Let's take a step back and talk about what you'll get in return. I promise you a no-tariff agreement, co-investment projects, and oil. In return, you will assist me in destroying the terrorists in my country. There might be international ramifications. The hell with international ramifications! I'll protect my country, I don't care what they say. What I want from you in turn for all the money and resources is a joint operation in our armies against BFF. Take a moment to think about it. I think it's too risky! I think it's too risky, I'm afraid I can't escape. Wait, Anton, wait. Normally, I wouldn't offer anything else, but I like you. Here's my final offer. When this operation starts with you or without you, there will be stragglers trying to cross into Sorland. We just want you to support the operation, even if you don't join. Stop the terrorists from fleeing into your country, and you'll have your deal. Simple as that. What do you think? We can have a deal. I knew I could trust Anton. Tonight we will drink. He claps his hands again. Drinks, dancers, and music. A group of dancers and performers enter the smoke-filled room. As they perform their songs, we clink their glasses to the newly found partnership while sipping a sweet Wessex liqueur. The next day, I turn to Sorland with a hangover. Sorlin ratify a new trade agreement with Valen. Sorlin ratify a new trade agreement, investment uh, protection agreement with Valen. The significant development shows significant normalization of Sorlin's Wesley relations and their decades of troubles. Yeah, we negotiate our trade deal. It seems okay. But now we have, oh yeah, we have, we have a trade deal with uh, Agnolia. Sorlin's one, one's flight Sorlin 1's flight from Hostelor to Stalaport took three hours, but it went very smoothly. We were about to touch down. David left his seat and came over to me while Simon was enjoying his newspaper. Looks like we are about to land, Mr. President. I looked outside, I can see Helland, the island between Vazland and Agnolia. So many conflicts over such a small piece of land. The island can barely sustain itself without outside help. I don't play. Is it a strategic position? Certainly. If you have Hedgeland, that means you are in control of the whole Virgilis Channel. I expect it will be one of the topics that Mr. Van Horten will bring up as a bargaining ship. We must be careful. Ashland might be under con the control of Agnolia, but the international community is yet to recognize it for a good reason, too. Nobody wants to make an enemy of Vogsland, especially because of their support for United Katana and the CSP. Me included, I don't want to do anything to injure our relationship with Vogsland. I agree. We should try to do our best to st stay in the middle ground. Someone folded the newspaper, got up and took a seat and sat right next to us. Aside from the point of Hajiland, we need to be careful with the additional request. According to the deal that was negotiated so far, they want to sell us their steel for a higher price, and are requesting easier access to our agricultural market. In return, they are promising a cash flow investments, especially in the Agland region. It's not hard to guess why. Precisely. Agnolian immigration in our Agland region makes up a good chunk of the region's economic now. Of the region's economy now. During the uh, initial negotiations, they have brought up the topic of immigration many times. The fact that we've relaxed our immigration law will help tremendously. Let's see if we can shake hands on it. The point made an announcement that the descent had started. David and Simon went back to their seats. Took another look outside the window. I can see Stalport, the capital city of Agnolia. The large stockyards of the city and the canals appeared closer as our descent continued. Stalport was certainly a fitting name due to the stall meaning canal. A couple of minutes later, we finally touched down. The plane parked. I took a final look at the window. The welcoming ceremony from Agnolia was waiting along a red carpet outside. As the guards made their way out, I exited the plane. I waved at the crowd that gathered. There were many camera flashes. I started to make my way downstairs. Prime Minister Van Horten was nowhere in sight. Instead, I was greeted by the Foreign Minister. 
Oh, Sergei's here. Fantastic. Hello, Sergei. I think like, today they use the same picture for somebody else? I know it actually is Sergei. After handshakes and a couple of photos, I moved into the car where Sergei was waiting for uh, to make our way to the office of the Prime Minister. Good day, sir. I hope the flight was comfortable. Thank you. It was. Uh, thank you, Sergei. I got in the car and we made our way through the foreign streets. Our convoy was protected by swords and Agolian guards in their vehicles. We began driving by the highway beside the port and saw dozens of dockyards and ships anchored. Some of the ships and machinery looked old. The city itself looked very gray and grim. The buildings had a touch of Rundberg's famous Monacanian agriculture and a mixture of sort of uh, signature domes on the older ones. We are now on the main road to the office of the Prime Minister. Looks like they're not too happy to see you, sir. Sergei points to the crowd that was gathering on both sides of the street. It was a protest. They were shouting and yelling at our convoy. Some of them held signs written in Swordish. Swordland must pay its debts to Agnolia. You know, I don't know Agnolia is so ungrateful. Not everyone sees a great leader like you every day. There have been, there have been many issues with us in Swordland. I don't know if I call myself a great leader. Sir, humility is important, but that's not the case. They're always scared of Sorlin's potential, and now they're afraid that the lines that a lion leads Sorlin. They're afraid of you. The convoy starts slowing down. We arrive, sir. The, the car continues through the gates while the security vehicles went the other way. We finally came to stop the front door. So we get left the car and opened the car door. Accident began walking to the door where dozens of press and prime minister and the prime minister were waiting for me. I saw the PM much more clearly as I near the door. He was shorter than I thought. Mr. President, welcome to Magnolia and to the beautiful city of Stalport. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. It's great to be here. You reached out for the handshake. The press surrounding us have been waiting for this moment. You know what? Let, let, let's let's shake hands. We shook hands and I went for the hug, which was received well by, Prime Minister, by the Prime Minister. The press went wild and took more pictures. He gestured to the entrance of a 200-year-old parliament building. This way, please. We entered and the press followed us inside. I would present you with a gift inside of a friendship between our two countries. An assistant showed up immediately with a large glass box in her hand. It contained a single parchment inside. This here is one of the finest treaties written between Sorlin and Agnolia. Just like the one you have prepared with Mr. Whiskey before my term. May I remark the renewal of our friendship today as well. This is an amazing gift. Thank you. Our photos were again taken. I gestured to one of my retainers who was holding our gift to the Prime Minister. Okay, what are we going to give him? Don't give him a dog, for if he's scared of dogs. Give him an ornamented ceremonial sword made of sword of steel. Ah, an excellent specimen. This must be hundreds of years old. I, it looks like the sword of steel as well. Very fitting. Thank you. The camera flashed again. Let's go to my office. Follow me. Also, what is what is this? What's new? Um. Okay, we've recovered trade volume. We have additional military forces being moved to reinforce the border between us and Whalen. And we have tariff-free oil trade. I mean, that's... Tariff-free oil seems really good. I followed him when we entered the office of the Prime Minister. It was a room of wooden minimalist uh, decoration. It was far more modern. Far more modest than I expected. We sat down. He leaned back and made himself comfortable. Sheesh. Thankfully, done with the ceremonies. Well, they the same and not fond of them either. One of the tougher parts of our job. He got up from his chair and uh, moved over to the bar. But there are many varieties of liquor. Would you like a drink, Mr. Uh, Rain? I wouldn't mind some Magnolian vodka. Ah, you know your drink. He poured the drinks and gave my me uh, gave mine to me before sitting down again. Let's get straight to business. Let's. First of all, I would like to say that I've been watching a recent change to the immigration policy. I'm glad that you decided to keep it relaxed. Immigrants are very important to the beneficial economic development between uh, that we believe is very much in Agnolia. Is Rushina sees Orla move in a direction more in a more modern direction? Thank you. He took a sip from his vodka. So tell me, Mr. Rain, is sort of a reliable trading partner to Angola? Of course, Mr. Van Houten, you can trust uh, Sorlin. Very good. Mr. Horan leaned back further in contemplation. So what's he going to be? First of all, if we shake hands on it, this agreement it is going to be really beneficial to the both of us. You should be able to solve your recession in no time with the investments of money flowing coming from us. This is, as you know, on the top of our redund uh, reduced tariffs for trade between our countries. Of course, for a term, as discussed be uh, between my people and your people before, it will allow us privileged access to your agricultural market. You'll be buying steel from us for a higher price, which is a small pay price to pay, really. 
That is a deal. What do you say, Mr. Rain? You know what? I'll accept it. Excellent. I mean, our foreign minister or the trade guy, um, he said it was a good idea. Before we dive into paperwork for the trade deal, I want to offer you another possibility. I would like to expand our newly formed partners, our newly found partnership. We have a regional force like Runeberg that has been imposing danger on both of our countries. I am amidst that we must unite. So, by the power bestowed upon me as Prime Minister of Agoya, I'm offering a military alliance between Sorlin and Agnolia. What do you think? Uh, that's... I mean, we know Vogslon has a navy that would absolutely crush us, right? And Runeberg has a military that's very powerful. I... I don't think we're ready to go that far with Agnolia. That's unfortunate. It would have been beneficial against Runeberg threat, however, Agnolia can stand by itself against any threat just fine. But there's not a topic I want to bring up. As you know, Hajiland has been long contested between Agnolia and Vogsland. These warmongers want to take back the island. You know how the international community does, does not recognize our rightful claim to the island, including Sorland. Wouldn't it be good that Sorland finally announces the recognition of Hajiland of Agnolia territory? You are asking simply too much. It is understandable, but I won't push too much of the matter. We've achieved enough for today. Well then, he stood up from his chair. We must continue the official program. As you know, we will pay a visit to our founder's grave for another ceremony. As we will move on to a state dinner. After you. Okay, if, uh, does the, is it, was the military alliance separate from the Vogsland thing? Because I feel like they're very much intertwined. As soon as we left the office, I briefed Simon and, uh, and David on the outcome of the meeting. The rest of our state trip was full of fake smiles, handshakes, and incredibly long ceremonies, and even longer meetings between our ministers and their counterparts. When we came to an end of the trip, the way back was mostly silent. I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief when we touched on a host lord. Okay, so we got some more news. I see that there's actually uh, four different missions uh, down south. Got a new trade deal. President Ring gives upper hand to Agnolia. And hang out, Van Horten is playing with fighter. I'm assuming, I think... Oh, no, 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 these are not... There's only one actual mission. I call, I'm calling it a mission. It's not really the right term at all. Okay, but that we're going to give a speech to the Grand National Assembly. I came to the Grand National Assembly of Sorland to deliver a speech regarding the new constitution and ask for the support of the assembly before the upcoming vote. I walked quickly through the corridors, giving my greetings to people on my way towards the Parliament Hall. When I entered the hall, the assembly was in complete chaos, with shouting and cursing between the parties. There's a heavy argument about the proposal made by an MP for the N proposal made by an MP of from NFP. I took my seat inside the special area reserved for the ministers. Glory was sh uh, shouting from her seat at the center of the hall as she hit the gavel three times. Was each strike heavier than the one before? Order! Order! I saw Clarissa Kibro standing up from his seat and shouting towards members of the PFJP. Mr. Clyburn, calm yourself. Show respect to the procedure of the assembly. Also, what's, what's new here? Increased trade volume. Okay. I, I feel like it's going to increase our, uh, our, our economy somewhat. Despite her efforts, the argument continued for a couple of minutes where everybody took back their seats and finally went quiet. You are the leader of the... Yeah, National Front. Mr. Clabber, next time when I tell you to do so, uh, either take your seat or leave the hall. We can receive the procedure assembly and continue our duties. Some MPs from the NFP side shouted back at her in protest. Honor, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me to continue, she pointed at me. We have the president here with us today. He has asked us to give an important announcement. The assembly fell silent. You have the floor, Mr. President. I walked in a stand as loud clapping started on the USP side. Honorable members of the assembly of Sorland, I am here to raise the important question regarding our outdated constitution. Honestly, if we're going to try to get something past the assembly, if we can, like, talk them up a little bit, being like, you know what, uh, assembly members, you're not powerful enough. Our elected assembly has always been overshadowed by the executive and designed the judiciary branch of Sorland. The Grand National Assembly must be able to exercise its job properly and without obstruction. However, our constitution fails to guarantee this. I continue. Therefore, we propose change of the constitution for Sorland for a more democratic area. Applause comes from the USP and the PFJP seats. We will rebalance the branches of government to ensure more democratic focus. I focused on unity. 
It's more important than ever that we stand united as a nation in these changing times. I call everybody to be part of the change our people have been calling for. We want all we want to make Sorlin better, don't we? Let's embrace democracy and unite under the banner of our people, and surely Sorlin will be great again. We will make Sorlin great again. Loud noises come from the USP and NFP seats. I took a breath and continued. It's time for us to make a new constitution together. Be a be part of a new era for Sorlin. Join us and vote for our proposal. Let's write the future together. I decided to read from a poem before I ended my speech. There's a destiny above destiny. There is my country beyond and uh, beyond everything, my beloved. There are songs be sung in affection of our victories. Fear not when the dark falls, there is an artist painting the sun. Beyond the next morning, there is victory waiting to be won. The assembly roared with all kinds of different reaction. The whole USP stood up and started applauding. Thank you for your speech, Mr. President. I walked back to my seats as many MPs started to speak. Franz Richter was among them, who is the leader of the uh, Justice Party. Yes, Mr. Richter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank Mr. President for the speech. We, the People's Freedom and Justice Party, stand in agreement with the need for a more democratic constitution. I would like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the United Sortland Party for their more open attitude coming compared to past years. As long as Mr. President's words prove not to be just words, we will be behind this uh, much needed uh, movement for change. We welcome the attempt. I ask Mr. President to share the final con uh, content of the proposal as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Suddenly, Kirso Kleber started yelling from his seat. Mr. The President must have lost his mind to cooperate with the likes of you, Mr. Richter. You and the PFJP are nothing but puppets of Western interest. Order! My name is Speaker. I know... I know you're in agreement with me as well. Don't stand idly here while the administration is making deals with snakes and undermining the integrity of Sorlin. Order, Mr. Clever, how many times do I need to say you're speaking out of turn? I demand to speak. Gloria gave him a stare. She looked annoyed. <sighs> Very mad, Mr. Clever. Go ahead. Mr. President, he looked directly at me. The Nationalist Movement does not agree with your priorities, nor the way you're trying to implement them. The National Front Party will not stand with you on your new constitution. Let it be known that the NFP's concerns are not included in the so-called democratic reforms. Thus, Mr. President has no right to claim them as such. We will stand on the grounds against any attempt to bring our uh, bring down our established political culture and national values. Thank you. I uh, went back to his seat, but the, the chaos in the assembly continued. I asked to speak. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Kleber, I looked at him. Um... I'm I'm standing here with your opposite your opposite stance. He watches these slash just see legs crossed. I'm not gonna be like I'm not gonna like completely shit on him because I feel like that's not not really what we should do as the president. I'm not gonna try to talk him into change. That's not gonna happen. I respect your opinion. But we will bring change regardless of your support. Gloria looked me at me to see if I had finished my response. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. I got up from my seat and started to walk towards the exit. MPs kept shouting and responding to each other, creating a loud, a loud mess where nothing was legible. Order, order, topic is finished. We are now moving on to the next topic. I slowly left the hall. The shouting could be heard from every corridor of the Grand National Assembly. But I think for right now, this is going to be a good time for us to end. Oh, wait. Well, first thing, let's read the news. Okay, you're just talking about that. Walker warns Vagalon Navy. Okay. So, also, what's in the journal? Okay, we just we just got more trade deals. So we hit the continue button. But I think uh, the wealth of nations. And this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks, everybody, for watching. My name is Anselm. If you enjoyed, with a thumbs up. Not to be close, thumbs down. You want to see more, subscribe. And goodbye.